GUI password generators may be fine, and sometimes you may get a password generated online using the web browser. But sometimes you want a quick and secure alternative. And what better than just to fire up a terminal and to set a single command to get a nice list of passwords. Well, in this video, we'll be looking at three password generators in the command line, plus a nice little bit of extra bash encryption. First, we're having a look at PWGen. That's PKG install PWGen. We'll first have a look at the switches available for PWGen. So if you use PWGen double hyphen help, and it's not a massive list, but it's quite, you know, there's a lot of good uh, options there. You can capitalize, no capitalize, numerals, symbols, secure, ambiguous. It's there's, there's enough to get going. But mainly, all we need to know is the length of the password and the number of passwords you want to be generated. So if you just do pwgen, uh, the default is eight characters uh, in length, uppercase, lowercase, and numerals, and gives you about 160 of them to choose from. Uh, if... Uh, if that's too many, you can actually specify the number you want. So PWGen again. Say like you want 16 character length passwords. And uh, we only want one of them. So that's, that's more manageable. Uh, again, if you want 16 uh, character passwords, you want five of them. There we go. You can emphasize uh, smaller ones. If you want to include uh, special characters, you know, like ampersands, etc. It's PWGen hyphen Y, lowercase y. Let's say we want 16 in length, and we'll have 10 of them. And there we go. Now, it's, these are getting more secure, but it's, it's quite good for a quick password. Next is make pass WD, or make password. And it's PKG install make pass WD. It's very much in the same frame as the previous one. Uh, just have a look at the help again. It's a little bit more in depth, uh, a bit of a wider choice to you can use. It is quite old at uh, 7th of April 1999, but it's still valid. You can still use it. And this one lets you encrypt it using MD5, etc. Some of these things, I don't know what they do, but if you're into encryption, then uh, some of these will make sense. I keep wanting to say crypto, but that's a different thing these days, isn't it? Right, so you just make pass WD, and by default, it will give you a choice of eight characters, uppercase, lowercase, and I don't know whether it's going to give you any numerals. Uh, yeah, give you some numerals. Because if we make it 16 characters in length, there's a, a two fives and a six pop-up. So no special characters, just numerals. So if you do 16 characters, and we want 10 of them, and it gives in a, a nice readable single column. I don't know if you can use special characters, but it does use crypt MD5, so I don't know. That must be, uh, must be worth something. Next, it's APG for Automatic Password Generator, and it's PKG install APG. And this is one that I use quite regularly. Uh, we'll have a look at the help file first. There's quite a few choices, um, a lot of sensible defaults. So again, you can just get straight in there without having to worry about um, what we're doing. There is a default of six passwords generated, and you can specify the minimum length of the password to be generated, and the default is 12, or the maximum, which is 20. So without specifying anything of the sort, you can just uh, get a good a good list. And we'll try that now, APG. And you can see uh, all different characters. Again, there's no special characters unless you actually specify it, unless you uh, emphasize that you want them. And the minimum is 12 characters and the maximum is 20. So if we run APG hyphen uh, M for the minimum character length that we want, it doesn't set the character length, it just gives you the minimum, and it's going to be 8. So you can 8 upwards to 20. And of course, if you just need 8 characters, you can either just highlight up to 8 or actually specify it. So we'll run that one again to give us a minimum of 8. But we're going to put special characters in this one. And there you go. Right. String encryption. We're going to use open SSL, and we're going to encrypt a little little comment uh, that we're going to use in echo. We're going to encrypt it, generate a cipher um, or a key derived from a password that we're going to include. Uh, so we put echo, and then we just uh, put a nice little message there, a secret message. We're going to pipe it into open SSL, then enc, and then we're going to use the uh, AES128 and PBKDF2 hyphen A. I'll give a, a little on-screen graphics to what all these switches are. 
And then we're going to give the password. And it should encrypt the thing. There we go. If you give this to uh, someone that you know, give them the, the various details, they, you could pass this little nicely encrypted message onto them and they could decrypt it at their end. You could send it in an email or just send them to a direct, whichever way you want to do it. Once the other person received it, so we'll just uh, copy that. And maybe we've just sent it to the other person and they're at the computer, so I'll just uh, make a little space. And if they uh, echo the newly generated string and we're gonna it's basically like we did before but we're gonna pipe it into OpenSSL and we're gonna use ink again and we're gonna go all the same things you know it has to be the same so if the other person knows what you used and all the switches then it you know it makes it a lot easier so we go through all the switches the hyphen a d for decrypt of course and k as uh, long as they know the password, I press enter. There we go. A secret message. I mean, I don't know in the scheme of things whether or not it's 100% secure, but it's near enough. And if it's uh, obviously non-state secrets, then it should suffice. Anyway, this is just a, a little look to what's available. There are, of course, some great GUI alternatives. Uh, but for the command line, they yeah, are... These are pretty these are pretty good ones, especially APG. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.